Hello everyone and welcome to the second webinar in the PPE series by Cope on best practices for assembling medical PPE. Before we begin and I hand you over to our presenter for today, I'd just like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's broadcast. Firstly, this is being recorded and a full recording will be sent to you after today's event via email. So please don't worry if you missed something, you can always go back and revisit the session afterwards. If you do have any questions for our presenters throughout the session, please feel free to submit them by using the questions pane in your control panel on the right hand side of your screen. We're going to collect these during the presentation and go through as many as possible in our allotted Q&A time at the end of the session. Finally, we do have some handout documents available, which will provide guidance on some of the questions you may have in relation to PPE. Again, you can find these in your GoToWebinar control panel. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker for today, Halil Demir, our Technical Services Manager for Apparel and Footwear. Over to you, Halil. Thank you so much, Sarah. Hello to everybody, Halil is speaking. Uh, let me introduce myself shortly. Uh, I am technical service manager in codes and uh, I am responsible for apparel and footwear garments. And I have been working in codes for 13 years. And today we will discuss about assembling PPE products. And as Sarah mentioned, this webinar is our second PPE products webinar and hope it would help you for your PPE business. In apparel business, we basically assemble small or big fabric parts by using stitches or some other methods like welding process in some PPE products. But today we will focus on more assembling with stitches. As we know in stitching on garments are essential for the durability and appearance of the garment and some special requirements such as water repellent feature and antibacterial feature, some protective features. So we will mention about security of the seam or stitches and some factors which can influence seam security. On the other hand, there are some critical components like stitch type, sewing threads and needles in stitching. We will also discuss about which threads and which machine settings, which needles are great for PPE products. Besides seam security, actually, there are also some quality standards for PPE garments, and we will also look at these standards. And finally, uh, we will leave at this session by gaining very good knowledge about the PPE products. Let's start it. And what kind of PPE products and we come across in the markets, firstly? Basically, there are four types of PPE products, and these are protective, protective pair and uniforms and hospital linen and some others. And if we give some examples from these products, we can see footwear covers and head covers and surgical face masks, surgical gowns and hospital gowns, hazmat suits and disposable personal or protective apparel under the protective pair and scrub suits, lab coats and healthcare uniforms, frontline uniforms under the uniform side and sheets, towels, privacy curtains, blankets, mattress protectors and theater drapes and some surgical drapes and as hospital linen and some other components, blood pressure cuffs, body bags, transport bags, and medical equipment bags, patient gifting systems, under the some others. And as a common feature of all of these garments, and we will discuss the important role seam security can play in ensuring protection in protective pair and uniforms. And let's start with stitch security of PPE products and why seam security is so important uh, on our business. As I mentioned in previous slides, we are assembling small fabric parts by using stitches and stitches are providing the durability and stretching of the final garments. 
And it is often assumed that choosing the right fabric is enough for providing PPE protection. But it is not only case. It is not the only case. Neglecting the seam construction can severely inhibit production, and this will be explored in more detail on the following slides as well. And just imagine your fabric is water repellent or antibacterial fabrics, but what would you do? if your stitches have some gaps or holes, and if your stitches were not adjusted correctly, if your stitches were not uh, have a good sewing thread, fluids, microorganisms, and some contaminations would enter inside of the fabric easily, and nobody wants this. And even if your fabric is appropriate, due to you have some problem in stitches, at the end of the day, your garment would fail. And let's take a look at the factors that impact seam security. Basically, seam security would depend on stitch holes and joint seams. And this, in turn, is impacted by many factors, as shown on this slide. In sewing, firstly, the needle heats the fabric and makes a hole on the fabric surface. During this session, by the way, we will emphasize or underline that hole should be small as possible as and we should fill this hole with correct thread type and correct thread size in order to prevent entrance of fluids, microorganisms, and particulates inside of the fabric. This logic will be our main logic today in PPE product sewing. Stitch holes are very, very important. And so which factors impact the stitch hole? The first one is thread to needle size. They always should be fit. At this point, I would like to give you a formula. Uh, normally, in standard apparel sewing, sewing thread should fill maximum 70% of the needle hole. And all thread to needle size recommendations are done according to this formula, according to this ratio, actually. But always keep in mind that in PPE products, sewing, we will try to fill this hole with coarser sewing thread. And so this means that we will fill about 70% of the hole by using some special needles. And we will discuss about these needles in the next slide as well. Please just uh, keep in mind this logic. We will explain more detail in the other uh, slides. And secondly, needle point is very crucial. And besides the needle size of the uh, sewing, uh, needle point, or in other words, the shape of the needle would always place a critical factor because according to the needle point the shape and the size of the stitch hole can change and finally thread finishes and we have some special threads and uh, with some thread finishes, spatial thread finishes, and with some spatial chemicals on the sewing thread surface. And we would be able to prevent entrance, fluids, microorganisms, and particulates inside of the products as well. Apart from stitch hole, the second big parameter is joint seams. Joint seams are very important for PPE products. In joint seams, we should have always a balanced stitches and we should not have uh, tight stitches. And always we should have correct sewing thread type. And we should avoid some missed stitch problems or some skip stitch problems. And we should avoid high stitch density, high stitch ratings. And of course, we should avoid thread breakage problem in our production line and in end user consumer usage. Now we will see the detail of these parameters on the next slide. However, based on my experiences, I can say that tight stitch not choosing the correct sewing thread and accordingly thread breakage problem in production units and in consumer usage are the biggest problem in our sector. Now let's discuss about deeply for each of these factors. So when looking at the stitch holes, the first area to consider to thread to needle size, because if the needle and thread size are not compatible or 
are not feed each other, there is always a risk that thread will not be able to fill the stitch hole in the fabric. And this can potentially cause a path through the fabric for body fluids, microorganisms, and particulates to enter and pass through. For example, as you can see in the picture, stitch holes were shown as red circles. And if the holes are large, this can be a problem for entrances. And in apparel, in apparel garment sewing, we mostly see little bit coarser needle usage in market due to manufacturers think that finer needles would break a lot and they will, needle, they will uh, need to change to needle more. But in PPE garments, larger stitch holes will always a big problem for us. That's why we suggest you to use smaller needle size in order to have smaller stitch holes on the fabric. And when we looking at the needle point side, and needles are available with different points which can impact the size and the shape of the stitch hole and cause damages on the fabric. The first one is the ball point. The ball point will generally cause less damage in PPE fabrics due to it is not sharp, but it has to be taken care as it could cause more heat in thicker seams with the rounder and the heavy point. And this causes fabric damage and especially bigger stitch holes on the fabric. As we emphasized on the previous slides, we don't want to have a larger stitch hole on the PPE products. If harder materials need to be stitched, the regular or sharp point may be better choice. As I mentioned on the previous slides, in sewing for PPE, we will always be focusing on to open a smaller stitch hole without damaging the fabric and filling this hole a little bit coarser sewing thread in order to prevent entrance of microorganisms fluids through the fabric. And I will mention about some special needle points on the next slide, but if you have no chance to supply these special needles, and if you ask me which needle point would make smaller stitch hole and be efficient in your production line, I can advise a sharp ball point needles called as SPI needles in market. And I am repeated again, it is SPI needles, sharp ball point. And it is either sharp, acute, or ball point at the same time. And finer sizes of the needles can also solve your problem. There are also some special needle points called as KN or SF or Sun 10 XS. And these needles were developed to open very, very small stitch holes on the fabric. At this point, I would like to mention about a second hole. Up to now, we mentioned about stitch hole and stitch holes occur on the fabric. And please remember the size and the shape of this hole depend on the needle point. But as you can see in the picture, every needle has a hole on the needle surface. And we called this hole as needle eye. And needle eye allows us to pass through the sewing thread inside it for stitching. There is always a relation between the size of the needle eye and the size of the needle point. For example, in standard needle, you cannot use a coarser thread with a thinner size needle due to the needle eye size would be thin like the needle point size. However, in new technology, in new special needles such as KN, SF or Santan XS, the needle eye was enlarged vertically and in order to use coarser sewing thread. With this logic, you can pass through a coarser thread in the needle eye by using thinner needle point. And so we are making very smaller stitch holes on the fabric and filling the hole with a coarser sewing thread. The logic is this. I especially put this example table for understanding easily. For example, as we can see in the table, in standard offers, when you use uh, our epic quality sewing thread in ticket 120, the most appropriate needle size is NM70 to 75 in SPI needles, but SPI needle is a standard needle. But in water repellent or antimicrobial offers, 
and uh, we will see these thread qualities in the next slide. We can see EPIC AWF and EPIC Protect size for these purposes. And we can use, for example, EPIC AWF uh, quality in ticket 120 with NM60 to 65 needle is in KN, SF and some 10 XS needle systems because these needles allows us to use very, very finer needle uh, points with coarser sewing thread. So our stitch hole is small and sewing thread is coarse. And in my experiences in PPE product sewing, KN, SF and Suntan XS would be the best choice for especially water repellent and antimicrobial or antibacterial or antiviral products. But if your PPE product will not be so featured or will not be water repellent, will not be antibacterial, and you can uh, also follow the standard offer that you can see in the tables. And when the correct needle to thread size is determined, there are specific threads that can help reduce fluid, microorganism passages, and contamination through a stitch hole. Our first offer is EPIC AWF. It is anti-weak correspond sewing thread that has a specially formulated finish to deliver a high degree of water resistance. As I mentioned in the previous slide, when you use EPIC AWF thread in your assembling with some special needles such as KN, SF or Suntan XS needles in very finer sizes, you will provide extra seam security for entrance of water inside of the garment. And this thread is also PFC free anti wick finish, which has no any harmful chemical to human body. Our second offer is Epic Protect. It is antibacterial correspond sewing thread, which is treated with an innovative process to give the finished the thread antimicrobial properties. And the antimicrobial process creates a zone of inhibition that prevents the growth of bacteria and pathogenesis around the seams. And also we suggest you to use special needles uh, as I mentioned before, KN, SF, and Santan XS needles in finer needle sizes. When we have very smaller stitch holes on fabric and coarser thread size, we can prevent the passages of microorganisms inside of the garment again. And if you need any support or extra information about needles and these threads, please just send an email by using ppe at coach.com and we will provide you support as possible as. And with this, uh, within this section, we will look at the second factor to consider for seam security. It is joining seams. In joining seams, it is important that there should be balanced stitches. If the stitch in the seam is not balanced completely, holes will develop and this causes gaps in the stitch hole. And it would be inevitable for entrances of water or microorganisms inside of the garment. As a solution, top and bottom thread tensions in stitches should be adjusted correctly. As you can see in the below stitch picture, top and bottom threads should meet in the middle of the fabric and they should have equal proportions. Unfortunately, as far as I can see, as, as far as I can face in the market, balanced stitch cannot be correct every time. And as you know, uh, there are lots of different sewing machines in production line and every machine can have different tensions. This point is very crucial for us. And so thread tensions are very important for our business. When the thread tensions are too tight, stitch would not reach to maximum extension and at that point stitch break easily. A broken stitch may not be easily recognized, but it can cause to potential fluid or microorganism passages inside of the fabric in the usage. Let me share my experiences in terms of tight tensions and breakages. Due to most of manufacturers use low price staple spun polyester threads 
with tight tensions, we can face many thread breakages problem in productions and in consumer usage. And these broken stitches can revel out easily because when they use staple spun thread, they will need more tight tensions for having a good loop formation. It is the nature of the staple spun threads. But this causes thread breakages in the next process as well. And core spun sewing threads have a continuous filament core inside of the thread. That's why core spun threads can work with lower tensions due to it has better strength and elongation and good sewing performance with lower tensions, you will face less broken stitch problem in core spun thread usages. In terms of tension, our main logic will be all thread tensions should be the lowest minimum tension as possible as. And another important component of sewing thread is lubrication. Be aware of this, every sewing thread has lubrication in order to reduce machine and needle heat, increase productivity and have good loop formation for a consistent stitch. So if you want to have balanced stitch, the lubrication level and lubricant chemical are crucial for selecting the right sewing thread. Otherwise, stitch would not balance and there would be some gaps and there would be some open areas and these will cause fluids and microorganism passages again. And please make sure your sewing thread should have good level lubrication and high level, high quality lubricants. And skip stitch problem uh, or in other words, missed stitch problem can be occurred on the seams frequently. In this problem, basically, top and bottom thread does not meet and does not have a loop. At this point, some gaps or open areas develop in the stitch line, and this in turn creates an opening areas for fluids and microorganisms to penetrate. There are some different causes for skip stitch problem. Firstly, we need to check machine tensions and all settings. If the machine tensions are too low, skip stitch problem can arise. Or cleaning the sewing machine regularly is crucial for preventing skip stitch problem. Most of manufacturers can use low-cost staple spun threads, and in this usage of these threads, there can be spun contaminations on the way of the sewing thread on the sewing machine. And thread quality is very important for skip stitch problem. Staple spun threads have more imperfections, faults on the threads, especially in low cost staple spuns. And these faults on the thread surface also cause thread breakage or skip stitch problem and some unbalanced stitch problem. So, as a thread quality, core spun sewing threads always will be the best choice quality of the garment and reducing skip stitch problem, thread breakage problem, and unbalanced stitch problems. As we mentioned in previous slides, we can also give antivic and antibacterial or antiviral pro properties on our core spun sewing threads as well. If you need any help for thread selection, or the problems you have faced in your production, please reach to us by using ppe at coach.com email address and we will respond to it quickly. And we should also focus on stitch density or stitch rating in the sewing. Stitch density and stitch rating uh, have the same meanings in our business, by the way. Stitch density means that the number of stitches per centimeter or inch. For example, higher stitch density causes more stitch holes on the PPE fabrics, and more stitch holes increase the risk of fluid or microorganism passages through the fabric. However, lower stitch density can cause some seam green problem, seam open areas on the stitch, and this can also cause the same problem. Stitch density should be optimum level and it depends on fabric weight and stitch type, sewing thread size. And Coats also would help you for these recommendations and please, please reach to us by using ppe at coats.com email address. 
And thread breakage problem, thread breakages can occur during the sewing and in consumer usage. When we consider the production productivity, thread breakages play a major role in terms of garment pieces that, your, that you can produce daily. Me and my other technical colleagues in Coats made around 600 productivity tests in our customers. And according to these results, we have seen that thread quality is so important in thread breakage problem. As far as I can see, when I visited a production unit, low cost staple spun threads can be used a lot. Due to these threads have more imperfection faults, such as nodes, hoses, and due to it is strength and elongation less than correspond threads, it can cause more thread breakages in your productions. And if I talk with numbers, once you converted your sewing thread from staple spun to correspond threads, your thread breakages reduce 80% and your daily garment pieces increase 30 to 18%. Why I gave these numbers? In PPE business, standard sewing machineries and some automatic face mask machineries are being used in market. And if your thread that used in your production breaks a lot, especially in automatic sewing machines, your daily production can decrease 13 to 18 percent daily. And this is waste of time and this is waste of money. And that's why we suggest you to use correspond sewing threads, especially in your PPE business, especially in your automatic sewing machines. And do not forget that cost of thread on the total garment is not up to 1%. The cost of sewing thread is below 1% uh, of the total garment cost. And it is very less, but it is low cost staple spun thread. It can be expensive for you due to its reduced productivity as well. And up to now, we mentioned about thread qualities, needle types and needle size and seam security. And now it is time to gather all of them. For example, uh, face masks. We usually come across lock stitch operations in face mask production. Due to it is lock stitch, we can face unbalanced stitch problems, skip stitch problems, and thread breakages problems when we choose wrong settings and wrong sewing threads. If you don't require antivic or antibacterial properties on your PPE product, as a standard offer, our Epic or Astra qualities would be the best choice for your mask stitches. As we mentioned before, due to Epic is correspond thread, it gives extra strength and extra elongation and higher productivity, less seam security problem compared with low quality staple spun threads. However, if you will use low cost staple spun threads instead of this, Astra, our Astra premium quality spun threads would be the better for your productions. And TEX18, TEX24, TEX27 sizes will be fit your face mask fabrics. As you can see in the tables, we usually offer 9 to 11 stitch per inch as stitch density, stitch rating. Even if these masks can be disposable or surgical masks, you can follow these recommendations. Secondly, if the need is water repellent or antibacterial mask, we will also advise Epic AWF, it is water repellent thread, and Epic Protac, it is antibacterial feature thread. As we discussed in our previous slides, we will also suggest to use very thinner needle sizes with some special needle points, such as KN, SF, Santan XS, in order to open small stitch hole on the garment. In hospital gowns and hazmat suites, we generally see the lock stitch and overlock stitches. In selection of threads, needles, stitch ratings, we will follow the same logic like 
face mask production. If the requirement is not water repellent or antibacterial, we will suggest firstly EPIC, secondly Astra quality for your log stitch operations. As you can see, stitch rating is around 10 to 11, 10 to 30, uh, 12 stitch per inch. But the requirement is a water repellent or antimicrobial threat. Thread quality will change to EPIC AWF, it is antivic sewing thread, and EPIC Protec, it is antibacterial sewing thread. In overlock stitches, in addition to EPIC Astra, EPIC AWF, and EPIC Protect, we will also suggest textured polyester sewing threads called Gramax. It gives extra soft and comfortable touch in PPE garments. And traditionally, a high number of products help in the healthcare PPE segment have been disposable and incorporated low value components. Surgical masks utilize non wovens and are ultrasonically welded, and rubber examination gloves contain no textiles. But recent events have led to the increased use of durable and washable PPE in industrial settings and have essentially created a new segment for consumer PPE. This has significantly expanded the opportunities for technical textile yarns. In addition to a basic cloth consumer mask, we have seen industrial requirements for flame resistant resistance masks as well as conductive and cut protect gloves. And yarns from our coats need and Flame Pro and Armor N portfolio provide the functionality to meet the challenges of these NEV applications. And as we surveyed the industrial and consumer PPE segments, we have seen not only an increased demand for antimicrobial solutions, but across all PPE markets, a surging demand for antiviral textiles. Coats has responded by providing enhancement to our topically traded protect range of the threads and yarns by engineering components directly into the fiber and we can now provide on inherent antimicrobial solution for our uh, spun yarns and these yarns will exhibit antimicrobial features without the use of topical treatments and they are bleach and peroxide stable and will not wash out. And in addition, we have developed on uh, antiviral topical treatment for yarn and sewing thread that will allow fabrics and seams to pass standard antiviral tests required in many product specifications. And it is also important to consider other elements that impact PPE protection. Choosing the right zip is crucial as a good quality zip can be reused many times without impacting protection. Some zips will also offer a water repellent element to protect against the water, against the fluids. All of Coats OPTS range of zips are high quality and meet many international standards such as BS, EN, and DIN. And they are cylinder and the Hydro F variation is also water repellent. As a reminder, when you are producing PPE, please remember to consider the quality requirement standards. Some of the most prominent standards are mentioned in this slide, but more comprehensive list can be obtained from the World Health Organization. Let's take a look at some of the important ones. The first one is EN. EN standard is European standard or European norm. And the second one is NFPA, it is National Fire Protection Association. And lastly, ISO, it is International Organization for Standardization. Please be aware that a lot of manufacturers are offering PPE with fake compliance certifications. Codes are able to supply full certification based on industry standards. And finally, 
we would like to remind you as we coach we will support you in your ppe business we can give product support what range of sewing threads and zips and trims are available and we can give digital support how can uh, we help customers to optimize production and with coach digital tools especially if they are looking at moving their current manufacturing to ppe products and we can give technical support we can understand your quality expectations and your business and find solutions in order to have high quality products and maximum productivity in your productions for all of these requirements please reach to us by using ppe at coach.com email address and we will be returning to you many thanks uh, thank you so much uh, for your listening to me and uh, Sarah Yes, thank you so much, Hilil, for that very insightful uh, question. So uh, we are going to move on to our Q&A um, section now. And uh, we've actually been joined by um, Tim Mead, who's our sales director for performance materials, um, to answer some of your questions that you've been submitted either before uh, you have joined the webinar or um, throughout today's session as well. Uh, so we've got about three minutes left so i'm going to try and get through uh, as many questions as i can um if you don't hear an answer to your question or you still have more questions then please don't worry um we will get back to you via email after the session today so anyone who has asked the question will get an answer even if it's not live on the webinar today so halil i'm going to put you on the spot first of all um so this one that's come in, uh, you, you spoke a little bit about, um, in your experience, uh, core spun threads would be your recommendation. Um, yeah. Can you just uh, give us a bit more detail about why you would recommend that? Okay. Okay, Sarah. Uh, actually, the simple is, uh, the, uh, the answer is so simple. Uh, there are some thread types, and the first thread type is core spun thread, and the another one's uh, staple spun polyester threads in our market are available. But when we consider about the PPE business, uh, most of manufacturers are using some automatic sewing machines, automatic paste mask systems. And in these machines, efficiency, productivity is so important for us. And when we think about core spun sewing threads, these threads has some continuous filament core inside of the thread. It is continuous filament, it is not staple spun. And this gives us extra elongation and extra durability. And the thread surface is so perfect. There are only five uh, imperfection faults in one cone. And this means that less thread breakages, more productivity, more garments, that you can uh, produce in your daily and uh, less quality uh, re uh, quality uh, repairments and qualities poor quality standards but in staple spun polyester threads um, the elongation and durability is thread is less than especially coarse spun threads uh, but when we take a look in the market there are lots of low cost staple spun polyester manufacturers and these threads have lots of imperfection faults on the thread surface and it's around 40 uh, imperfection on one thread cones and this cause lots of thread breakages on the machine uh, and this can also affect your uh, seam quality in terms of thread breakages unbalanced stitches so when we consider all of these things um, we are offering core spun threads. Uh, it is not so expensive, but uh, the uh, price differences uh, gives you extra productivity in your production. Uh, we tested in lots of time and I shared the results in the uh, webinar. I think this answer would be great uh, for this question. Thank you, Haleo. That was really clear. Uh, Tim. Uh, this one is is for you. Um, thank you very much for joining us all the way from America. I know it's very early for you over there. Um, so Halil introduced us to some of the, the newest additions um, to the Protect range, uh, Plus and V. Um, can you just outline the differences between them and our standard Protect range? Okay, thank you, Sarah. Hello, everyone. 
good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you may be. Uh, to start with and recap a little bit of what Halil said, but our traditional protect threads um, provide antimicrobial properties through the use of a topical treatment. So protect plus provides an inherent solution with components embedded during fiber formation. So we can then take these fibers, blend with other fibers and create a multifunctional spun yarn. We have the ability to incorporate the protect plus technology into non FR coach knit yarns, FR flame pro yarns, as well as our cut resistant armor and yarns. So this is a very versatile technology that we are adding. Protect V will be a topical solution and will add antiviral properties along with antimicrobial to either thread or yarn. So I hope this clarifies. Certainly, if you have more questions, please contact us at ppe at coach .com. Back to Thanks. you, Sarah. Yep. Thank you, Tim, and thank you very much for getting up so early and joining us. Um, so, Halil, I'm going to go back to you because we've had a couple more questions uh, on thread and stitching in particular. So, uh, this first one that come in is how many washing cycles do you recommend for garments utilizing coats to protect? Um, and how was this deter determined? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Sarah, uh, we made lots of external tests and internal tests uh, for using by using this thread, and we saw that uh, coats protect. Uh, washing durability is up to 75 washing times and up to 75 washing types we saw that 90% uh, of the chemicals stays still on the thread surface uh, even if uh, the temperature is so high so I can say that 75 uh, washing times uh, you can trouble your garments against uh, some microorganisms Uh, great, I almost forgot to go off mute there. Sorry about that. Um, so that's um, really great. Thank you, Halil. So just one more, um, and then I think we'll we'll wrap it up because we're very quickly running out of time. Um, how can we ensure stitch holes are not too big to ensure that microorganisms or water um, doesn't get through? I know you were talking about this a lot at the beginning, but do you mind just recapping it for us? Yeah, good question. Um, when we think about uh, all garments, uh, we can see that uh, fabric is covers nearly all the garments, but the only some areas uh, which can microorganisms entrance can entrance inside of the fabric is uh, stitch areas. And in stitch areas, and we can see that in every stitching, we are opening a hole, stitch hole on the fabric. So these holes is very important for us uh, in terms of not uh, uh, passages of microorganisms. So uh, what can we do uh, at this point? Before production uh, starts, uh, we need to check needle type, needle size, and thread size, thread type, because every time our logic will be uh, making smaller holes and filling these smaller holes by using coarser uh, sewing threads uh, to close the uh, stitch holes. And in order to be ensured this, uh, please uh, reach to us because uh, this answer will depend on your uh, fabric weight and uh, fabric uh, your uh, PPE requirements. And according to your requirements, uh, we can give uh, these combinations, what kind of needles, what kind of needle sizes, threads, or stitch densities, or stitch types uh, that you should use it. Uh, we will help you uh, for this recommendation uh, by using pp at, uh, at coach.com email. Thank you so much, Halil. Um, I think that is all we have time for today. Um, again, uh, thank you to Halil and Tim as well for answering those questions. Um, if you did get in touch and we haven't answered your question, then please don't worry, we will get back to you after this. Um, of course, if you do still have some burning questions for us here in Coates or you still do want some advice, please do get in touch with us um, via the email that we've spoken about today, um, ppe at coates.com. Um, if you do want to catch up on anything that we spoke about today, um, as I said earlier, the, the email um, with the recording will be sent to you after this. Um, we've also added the slides um, from today's presentation as one of the handouts, so please do take a look at them. Um, there's also some FAQs that we've had recently about PPE, 
um, and some more information about that new uh, Protect Plus range that uh, Tim and Ahilil touched on. Um, you can always go back and revisit um, our first webinar in the PPE series as well. Um, like I said, this was our second one. Um, if you go on the website, it's the exact same page as you'd find uh, the registration form for this webinar. Um, you can revisit the first webinar that we did, which was an introduction to PPE manufacturing. Um, please do make sure you keep an eye on our Coach social pages, Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram for uh, more information about uh, webinars that we'll be hosting um, in the next um, few weeks. Um, again, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Any questions, please email ppe at coach.com and we hope to have you join us again for a live broadcast very soon. Have a lovely day. Bye everyone.